my name is Maria Jalikar. Welcome to my show, Let's Talk About History. Today I have a special guest, actor John Koopman III. John Koopman has portrayed General George Washington in several movies. For instance, Liberty, America, Imagine the World Without Her, Young George Washington, Yorktown, Battle for Victory, George, General George Washington, Washington's War, General George Washington and the Revolutionary War, Washington, the American Revolution, George Washington. John Koopman has portrayed General Washington since 2006 at national and state parks and other historic sites along the East Coast. Here is a video with John Koopman portraying General George Washington. Okay, uh, General Washington, um, I would like to ask General Washington a few questions for our viewers who like history. When and where were you born, General Washington? I was born in uh, Pope's Creek in uh, Westmoreland County, Virginia on February 22nd, 1732. Okay. Can you tell me about your childhood in Westmoreland, Virginia? My time there was, was very brief. I, when I was three years old, our family moved to the uh, little Hunting Creek Plantation, which went on to become uh, later uh, Mount Vernon. At the uh, age of six, uh, the family moved again uh, to a place called Ferry Farm, which is on the Rappahannock, also in Virginia, not far from uh, Fredericksburg. And also at, uh, at age six was the first time I recall having a memory of my older brother, Lawrence. You see, he had been away at school in England, the Appleby School, it's also in uh, Westmoreland, England. He was, had been away for many years uh, with his schooling for his studies. Uh, he uh, was 14 years uh, my senior when my father uh, passed away, Augustine uh, Washington. Uh, he was at age of 48 and I was 11 years old. Uh, Lawrence was a critical figure in my life. He, he became a, a, a father figure. Uh, he was uh, loomed very large and was very helpful to me as a child. All right, General Washington, I would like to ask you, how did you meet your wife, Martha Custis? Well, I was a, uh, the colonel of the Virginia Regiment during the last uh, French War. And as part of my duties as the colonel, uh, it was actually on March the 5th, uh, 1758, I was traveling at... Uh, New Kent County, and it was an old uh, friend, uh, Mr. Uh, William Chamberlain, that, that lived there, and I stopped by for a visit, and I was surprised to see that uh, he had company, and there was a gathering, and Mrs. Uh, the widow, uh, Mrs. Uh, Martha Custis, was there, 
And I had a chance to engage her in conversation and we found uh, we had many common interests. And I must say, we, uh, we spoke until the wee hours of the morning before we turned into the night. And it was after that that I began uh, courting her. And of course, in uh, 1759, we were, we were married. Very nice. I didn't know she was a widow when you met her, when General yes, Washington uh, met her. She had had uh, four children, and sadly, uh, two had uh, passed away. And she had two surviving children, uh, which in later years, sadly, also preceded, uh, predeceased, well, died, you know, of course, uh, fairly young. General Washington, you are a surveyor of land. Why did you decide to live on the property where Mount Vernon is? No estate in America is as beautifully situated as that. And it is uh, high and dry on one of the finest rivers in the world. So it... Uh, it certainly is uh, in, a, in a beautiful spot. Okay. When did you build your home at Mount Vernon and how long did it take to build? Well, of course, the, uh, my father, Augustine Washington, he uh, had control of that property and in 1734, the construction began. And as I shared earlier, our family moved there in uh, 1735. It was uh, during this unfortunate death of my, uh, my father, Augustine, uh, the, in his will, he left the little hunting creek uh, plantation to my older brother, Lawrence. Now he had, um, served with uh, Admiral Edward uh, Vernon in the War of uh, Jenkins' Ear, and he was uh, so impressed uh, with uh, Admiral Vernon that he named uh, the estate after him. Now, the house that was built uh, by my father and lived in uh, in later years by my brother Lawrence, it was a one-story but yet substantial farmhouse of uh, a main uh, hallway and a main hall and then four adjacent rooms. Uh, it was also part of the will that um, if something was to happen to my older brother, it would revert to me. Now what sadly, tragically, uh, my brother Lawrence died at age 34, a very young man. And also sadly, again, his, uh, his wife uh, passed away. So the house re reverted to me and the, the estate. And so I took that uh, simple uh, one-story but yet substantial uh, farmhouse, and in the late 1750s, I added a second story. And then in the uh, the 1770s, uh, leading up to the to the war, uh, two wings were added, lengthening the mansion. And then when I was away at war. Uh, under, this was all part of my design. I had laid out the drawings ahead of time. Uh, the cupola, uh, which is a significant feature, and the piazza, which is a large porch behind the house, were, were added. But these were design themes that I had uh, seen from books in, in Europe that inspired uh, my design. Okay, I've, I've visited um, Mount Vernon um, when I was very young, well, as a child, about 12 or 13, so my, I recollect there was a, um, an area for the slaves to live in. Wasn't that off of the kitchen area? Do you recollect that? What, do you, uh, Mount Vernon? There was an area, I mean, I hope you don't mind me bringing this up because it's sensitive to a lot of people. But wasn't there an area where the slaves <laughs> stayed in, in the house? Well, you... well, of course, there are, uh, there are walkways that extend in either direction 
uh, as you have the main courtyard for the house. Okay. And there, there were some small buildings at the, the end of those courtyards where uh, some of the uh, slaves uh, live. But there's also uh, slave cabins at other locations because there's actually uh, five different uh, farms on the estate. And, of course, uh, at one point, a, a fairly large uh, building was constructed to hold uh, several uh, slave, slave families. Okay. Um I wanted to ask you, where were some of the materials like marble shipped in from other countries? Of course, they marble, had marble. Is, uh, yeah, marble is uh, very costly, but you can achieve uh, the same effect for almost no expense, for much lesser expense. There is a process called uh, rustification. And that is when you take uh, long pine boards and you put grooves and bevels and then you apply paint. And when the paint is wet, you throw uh, very fine sand on the surface and that creates a very rough texture. And the whole um, process appears to be masonry blocks. So it's actually wood made to look like marble. Mm -hmm. Okay. So thank you, John, for sharing with me about some of the things that uh, you portray as George Washington, um, some of the uh, childhood and how he met Martha Custis. Um, John, you authored a book, George Washington at War, 1776. In the book, you talk about Washington's skills as a military strategist. How did Washington learn his skill as a military strategist? Well, thank you for asking, and I'll, I'll come out of um, character. Uh, Thank you. Typically, when, <laughs> when I give these uh, presentations, I, I do them in first person as if I actually am George Washington. But uh, going forward, I'll talk as uh, John Cooper. But here is my. so much like him. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. So this is uh, my book, uh, George Washington at War, seventeen seventy six, and it's. Um, you can go to my website, and my website is. John Coopman the Third or John Coopman III dot com, and there are links, uh, or you can go directly um, to. Uh, it's available on Amazon, and also you can be ordered online at uh, Barnes and Noble. Uh, and also, I might add that um, it is illustrated. So hopefully, you can see the. Yeah. yeah. So each uh, each chapter uh, has a drawing. Uh, associated with it, and mm -hmm. I, I must say the uh, the young um, artist, her name is uh, Soraya Klontz. Uh, she is someone who is at some point probably going to be a famous artist, but uh, she did the the drawings for me. Uh, she's a very incredible um, artist, and I thought I might share in passing that when you see for those who buy the book, when you see drawings of horses in there, that actually is my horse uh, that was used as the model. Uh, for these drawings, but in reference know, to your right. other question, I'm sorry. Yeah, your website talks about uh, in your book. He talks about the horse George Washington's horse and how George Washington used the horse during war, and how yours resembles so much Washington's horse. <laughs> Is that true? Yes, he's uh, he's he's not retired, but he's he's still around and. Um, I actually had him at an event fairly recently. He can he can walk, but he has arthritis. He can't do what he used to do. But he portrays oh. Nelson. A lot of people don't realize this, but um, there were uh, he rode many horses throughout the war, but primarily there were two. One named Blueskin. He is the uh, the white horse, um, but he was a bit skittish in battle. He did not stand the cannon fire very well. So his favorite was Nelson, uh, which was the chestnut, and of course uh, my. My horse Abishai portrayed uh, 
uh, Nelson uh, quite well o- over the years. He's appeared in different films and so forth. But when you talked about Washington's leadership style and how did he get to that point, he was the uh, the colonel of the Virginia Regiment during the French and Indian War, and he learned a great deal about supply and some of the struggles of command. But yet, at the other hand, he he never dealt with uh, cavalry or artillery, and he just had command over approximately uh, five five hundred men, and never probably altogether at the same time. Uh, but he did a lot of his on-the-job learning, and he did buy a lot of military books, and that's where he got his experience. He is um, criticized of being somewhat of a, a, a novice, and that General Howe uh, outwitted him in many battles. And of course, he died, he did actually lose more battles than he won. But the important point is, is that in the military operations, what you're trying to achieve is envelopment. That's when you you cut off all avenues of escape to the enemy to achieve uh, victory. And Washington, even though he lost many battles, he always found a back door. He always found a, a way out. But in my uh, but in my book, I wanted to show the development of his leadership style, and the book focuses on the siege of Boston, and of course the Battle of Harlem Heights, which gets both. Both battles get very little attention, but they both were significant. Of course, Harlem Heights taking place in Manhattan uh, during the Battle of, uh, for New York. Uh, so in the, in the book, you not only learn about Washington, but you learn about uh, the average soldier. It traces uh, soldiers uh, from two units, one from the Boston area and one from Connecticut, which is interesting because, in one sense because I grew up in the Boston area, but I now live in Connecticut. And you get to see the battle from the British point of view, from the common soldier, and of course, uh, from uh, General Washington. And I might add that uh, there is a very exciting horse chase in the book. Uh, A lot of people are not aware of this, but there's a primary source account of Washington being alone on horseback, and he's being chased by British horse, most likely the uh, 17th Dragoon, some of the finest uh, (laughs) horsemen in England. And there's a very exciting um, exchange there on showing uh, how Washington, how he would ride. And um, I don't want to give too much away, but it's it's not it's not a good day for the. Did he go to a military school? Did George Washington go to a military school? No, there was uh, there was not a military school available. He did seek a commission in the British Army, but he was denied that he he went actually went to boston for the first time as a young man in his 20s when he was colonel of the virginia regiment and he sought a commission of the british army but uh, he was not given that commission perhaps history would have been different if he had been given that commission but no he only uh he had on the job training from the time he was running the regiment uh the virginia regiment and he had quite a few uh, military books so he had a collection of military books that he referred to, but and a lot, of course, uh, learning on the job. Okay. All right, um, John, uh, thank you so much for being my guest today at my show. I hope the viewers enjoyed watching my show. Uh, thank you very much. And thank General you for what you're Washington. doing for history. Yeah, thank you. Mm-hmm.